Today we are going back to the basics with colored pencil blending focusing on color temperature. You will need a pack of colored pencils and you either need a sketchbook page or find the link in the description box to download and print this exact handout that I'm using in this video for free. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. Now that you have your materials ready, we are going to be focusing on blending color, focusing on temperature. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side, focusing on my reds. Taking your red colored pencil, fill in where it says R, pressing down with light to medium pressure. Then fill in where it says RV, which is red violet or red purple, depending on what colored pencils you're using. Apply even lighter pressure to create a thin layer of red that we are then gonna blend that other color too. So although your colored pencil pack might already have a red violet or a red orange, we are blending these colors ourselves only using the primary and secondary colors. Speaking of color temperature, red violet is the cooler version of red. So I'm taking purple or violet, depending on what brand colored pencil you're using, and I'm applying a really light pressure over that light pressure red that I've already created. Again, we're gonna be layering and layering and layering. If you press down too hard, then you have no space to blend because the pigment of the color you press down hard with first takes over the paper. So have patience and lightly blend, building up your color in that way. As you can see, it looks almost totally violet. The red disappeared. So I will do a second layer and I'll do a third and probably a fourth to get the voice of the red back in there. Remember this color isn't purple or violet, it is red violet or red purple. So making sure that it has an even consistency of both is key. Now I am using student grade colored pencils. If you have a nicer pack of colored pencils, like maybe Prismacolors or something more expensive, these work great and they're perfect for the classroom and they do blend very well. But just know that depending on the brand that you're using, um, you're gonna get different results with your uh, colors because some colored pencils have more filler. Um, they have materials in there that's not just the pigment. So again, you usually get what you pay for with art supplies, but this is a brand that I use in my classroom and they work really well for what we're doing. So now I'm gonna press down a little harder and go over to the warm variant, which is red orange, and I'm using orange to fill in those gaps. So you can see there's no line of separation. Um, and since orange is the next color, I'm gonna extend that all the way down, pressing light, um, maybe light to medium with this. You can see the red really stands out. The red orange really needs to blend. You can kind of see how I spent more time blending the violet, the red's really nice, and then the red orange needs some more work. Going back in with red, because again, this isn't orange, it's red orange, and I'm putting more layers. And now that red is really, um, we're starting to finish up that color, I'm pressing down. So at this point, I'm pressing down pretty hard. Um, when I'm blending two colors, I still kind of stay around medium pressure, but once I have my color combo right, or I'm just simply using one color, then I kind of go in and press down further. This is yellow orange, and so I'm pressing down pretty lightly because I know that orange is going to be a little bit more of an aggressive color than my yellow. And going back to just the straight up orange and applying pretty firmly down with my hand to get that color combo. Don't be afraid to really press. Your hands should hurt a little bit with colored pencil blending because you're really pressing and blending uh, with your hand. All right, time for yellow, which is my favorite color. And I'm pressing down pretty hard right away because I know this brand of colored pencils and I know yellow very well. And it's one of those colors that you need to, um, it's just very light in pigment. So you wanna kind of press down maybe harder to get its voice across. You can see I'm being very gentle with the um, orange to make it a nice flow of colors. Again, this is not a fill in the blanks like color recognition exercise. This is focusing on blending seamless colors so it looks like you almost painted it on your uh, page and really focusing on those color temperatures. So if yellow is the base color and orange is the warm variant, green is going to be the cooler version of that color. So I'm applying a thinner layer of yellow, not pressing down hard because I want the green to have a voice too, and I'm going for straight up green. Not yellow green, just the plain green. Remember, we're using primary and secondary colors. I personally think the yellow green combination is one of the more difficult ones to blend. You can see how dominant that green is. You can really see like a separation of color. So it's going to take a little bit of work. The blue and green are really much more simple. So I'm going ahead and putting a layer of green there, and then I'm gonna to need to focus on that yellow green blend so it doesn't have an awkward flow to it, but there's a true blend. 
So I'm pressing down aggressively. You can kind of see how my knuckles are white. Uh, pressing down aggressively, and I might never get that right. I should probably have um, done a lighter layer of green to start with, but this is a learning exercise, so you get to know your colors and how they blend as you go. I am being a little bit more dominant with the green by itself and just pressing down and just building up and building up and building up. Blending with colored pencils, sometimes you have to decide, does it require a heavier hand or does it require patience where you're just gonna layer and layer and layer and layer until you get the colors interacting in the way that you see fit. That's why practice is really important, especially if you're using different color combinations or a brand of colored pencils you're not used to. So moving on to green, so if green is the base color and yellow is the warm variant, then blue is going to be the cooler version of this color. Blue and green mix really well together because they're very similar, um, kind of like a red-orange combination that just naturally kind of flows. So I'm not as stressed with this one. I know that I'm pressing down about medium, um, really getting that blend in there, not letting the green disappear with the blue-green, making sure that it's a nice kind of 50-50 effect so that that blue-green really shines. We are moving towards the end of this spectrum and we're shifting from our blue to our blue-violet into our violet and we're gonna end where we started with red-violet. So as before, I've laid my light layer of blue and now I'm going in, oops, looks like I picked up red, so that's a teacher fail. Um, so I'm mixing violet because I'm thinking, okay, blue and red make violet. So oops, let me fix that just by going over it with purple. And although that was a fail, I can fix it. And that's why this is practice. I'm an art teacher and even I got my colors confused. This can hurt your head a little bit, really thinking about color and temperature, warm and cool. Um, art doesn't always have lots of rules, but when it comes to color theory and looking at color and all of that, there are some rules and there are some things to memorize and also just to use your artist's eye when looking at color. All right, now that I've fixed that blender, I'm doing violet by itself. Um, I'm pressing down a little bit harder because there's so many layers of the blue violet because of the re accidental red. So I'm pressing down a little bit harder to make that uh, make more sense. Then you can see I'm lightening up my pressure and applying a, a lighter pressure with the red violet since I know I'm mixing two colors together. So I'm going back in and I'm already pressing hard there just to make that flow of the blue violet. It's not perfect, but it's a learning exercise. So we are ending where we started with red violet and it's funny because I can really tell a difference um, when I started one with blue and one with red. It's the same color, I use the same colors to mix it, but there is a difference. So maybe I pressed down harder, maybe having that first layer really made a difference. So although that's both red violet, they do have a slightly different look to it, which I find very fun and interesting. Now that we've practiced, we're gonna level up and shade a sphere focusing on color temperature. I added a little bit of a shadow there, um, and red is going to be our base color and the color temperature that we focus on for the rest of this video. So I'm making a little chart off to the side so that I can remember red is the base color. And although we will be using multiple colors, think of this if it was a marble, you would say the marble is red. We are going to shade the sphere as if the light source is coming from the top right hand side. So the highlight and the warm variant of red will be on the top right hand side. If this is your first time thinking of color temperature, I highly recommend writing out for each sphere and color scheme um, this little chart so that you can remember it. If you've only shaded things with a pencil or you've only used color for shading, and by that I mean like just one color or maybe you added white or black, this will really help you understand the colors that you're using. At the very bottom, we're using violet as the cool variant of this color. So this is the cooler version of red's temperature. And it's not going to be just purple, it's going to be red violet or red purple as we practice in our very first exercise. We are also going to shade the shadow and we are not using red violet, we're not using black, we're not using gray. We are going to use color complements to create a beautiful neutral that is specific for red. So hopefully there's an art teacher in your life who have taught you about complementary color schemes. If not, give it a Google right now. Red and green are complementary colors, opposite on the color wheel, which means they're contrasting. They're the most opposite colors and each color combination is different. So red and green are the pair that we're using for this and just know that it's different per color. Start with your white highlight by pressing down as light as humanly possible with your base color, which is red, to leave space for your highlight, as you saw me do on the top right hand side. Then take your base color, and as we did in our horizontal shading, we're going to apply a very thin and light pressured layer of red, the base color of our sphere, 
on the whole sphere. So we're actually not shading yet. We're simply applying one thin layer that will be the base coat for all the colors that we'll be blending and shading to eventually. Do you see how I'm shading in a crescent moon formation? Because we want this to look 3D, we want it to look round, we want it to look spherical, like a marble you could pick up off the table. You want to shade in the direction of the shape or form that you are trying to create. So this takes a little bit of time. I am gonna speed it up a little bit from this point because it takes me several minutes to apply that thin, smooth, rounded uh, layer of color, but it really pays off if you slow down, make sure that you are using semicircle or circular strokes when using your colored pencil. Now I've doubled the speed, if it looks like I'm going really fast, and you can see that circular highlight, we're closing in on it slowly. Well, not so slowly here. And you can make your highlight bigger or smaller. Um, I'm just doing kind of a standard like glare as if this really were a marble sitting on the table. Filling in the shadow as well. Now we're gonna think the cool variant, which is red-violet. Since we've already applied a light layer of red, it's time to apply a light layer of violet. Notice I am shading in the exact same crescent moon formation, semicircle, and again, the point's not for it to look purple. Eventually, it needs to still look red, red-violet. Typically, shadows are very cool. So if the light source was hitting it at the top right-hand side, the warmest colors are at the top and then it cools off as the light gets away from it and then you have your cast shadow. So this is where your sphere is really gonna start to come to life, really start to look 3D, although I'm still not really shading and shading is focusing on value, the lightness or darkness of a color. I'm still just blending those colors and then I'll determine how hard to press down to create those light and dark values. As you have gathered from all of our practice, now it's time to go back to red, our base color, and blend that violet to create the true red violet that we are going for. Speaking of shading, I am pressing down harder. I want this to be the darkest value or the area that has the shadow and the darkest shading of this. So the red purple, I'm gonna really press down on with uh, harder than I will the red orange, but I still am pressing down really hard on all of it because I just don't like when colored pencils are so weakly blended that you can see a lot of the paper underneath. I wanna fully cover or burnish my paper so that the pigment really covers it and it makes a really vibrant effect. A lot of times I see students being really shy with their blending, uh, maybe because their hand hurts or they just don't know to press down harder. Colored pencils are so effective and they can be so bright and almost look like paint if you really take the time to blend and put that right pressure in at the right time. So I'm blending that red to the violet and you can see there's quite a difference between the bottom part of the sphere and the top. The bottom's pretty well developed, the top is not developed at all with that awkward white highlight. So it does take a lot of work to get to that finish point. So now I'm using my warm variant, which is orange. And keep in mind, you wanna read the label of your colored pencils, because if I'm doing this visually, this colored pencil actually looks very red to me, unless I color with it. So make sure you're organizing your colors and reading the label, because sometimes the outside of the colored pencil doesn't quite match what the pigment or the quality that you get on the paper looks like. I'm being very gentle with the orange. I'm shading and adding color as light as possible, really trying to make sure that that highlight I added isn't just stuck on there, but I'm just gently shading. And now I really am focusing on really light values with that orange. So the highlight looks natural and it's a natural progression of that warm to that white area. Now, of course, we go back to red because we don't want this to be orange, we want it to be red-orange. So I'm very lightly applying a second layer of red, covering up that orange to give it a more harmonious uh, flow. Now I'm going to blend and shade. Because I have my colors mapped out, I have it very carefully blended, now it's time to really push the limits of how dark and light I can get my colors. I have sped things up since I am just layering on skills that I've already done, and I really want that nice dark shadow. I'm a big fan of contrast, so I'm gonna really play up that red-violet, really make it look dark, really make it look like it's going in, and really giving it a 3D spherical effect. So you'll see me go back and forth between violet and red, violet and red, until I really get that nice effect that I like. And then of course, when you press down harder in other areas or you blend colors in other areas and it's more developed, as you can see here between the bottom part and then the top right hand side, then you still have to go back to your warm colors and do the same thing. I'm also really wanting my colors to be very vibrant. So the kind of center part, the center curve of the sphere should be almost, well, pure red. So now that I've pushed the shading and the dark area and the violet, I'm trying to really press down 
and get a beautiful, vibrant, and darker red um, that really just makes this not look like I'm scared of using my colored pencils, but that this marble or sphere could just jump off the page. I want the warm part to match, so I need to go back to orange to make sure that that doesn't look underdeveloped compared to all, uh, all the darker shading that I've done on the other part of the sphere. So I'm pushing the red a little bit further, closer to the highlight, and then I'm going to take a white colored pencil, and that's really the fun part, to make that highlight not just be like boop, just like a random white circle, but really flow into that warm red-orange color that we spent so much time blending. So I'm gonna go back in with my orange. And yes, it looks red on the camera as far as like the pencil. When I color with it, it looks orange. So make sure with your brand, whatever you're using, read the label um, and focus on those primary and secondary colors. Um, so I'm getting that orange and I'm, you can tell by my knuckles that I am pressing down harder. And I did speed this up a little bit. So if it looks like I'm going much faster, I sped it up by about 25%. And because I just can't help myself, I want that shadow darker, I want it cooler. So I'm going back to violet again to make that really stand out. So with colored pencils, it's all about going back and forth and back and forth, not just being one and done and filling it in like, you know, like an elementary assignment where you just do color recognition. Uh, you're really focusing on that blending and shading at this point. You could spend a whole lot of time and spheres are definitely harder than shading in a straight line. And it's a lot harder than shading with one solid color. Like if you were just doing this with a pencil, you're focusing on lights and darks and not on color temperature. Now we're going to use white to soften that highlight and really make it a part of the sphere and not just an unforgotten part of the work of art. Finally, it's time for the shadow. And since I already have my thin layer of red, the color complement is green, a color that was nowhere near the red on our spectrum practice because they are complete opposite on the color wheel. They are complementary contrasting colors. So you can already see it makes a really beautiful, almost like grayish neutral color and you can really get almost a black when using this. This is such a great trick if you wanna elevate your works of art, whether you're painting or using colored pencil, instead of just picking up the black, which can make your colors muddy, pick the color complement to create shadows and areas um, of more of a neutral dark area that will make your color scheme just look more professional and more harmonious. You can layer just like I did on all the other colors and you can get as dark as you can, uh, depending on how much of a contrast you want in your shadow. And for me, I always want it to be as contrasting as possible. So that's the red sphere. And if you're one of my students, you are going to do a sphere in all the other colors. So orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Keeping in mind that every color temperature is different depending on the color that you're using. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. Also, find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado to see what my students are up to in my classroom and find my website thatartteacher.com for full-length lesson plans, blog posts, and lots of student examples.